Education, Laurie Kilmartin. There it is. We're Hello. talking to each other. I'm in my garage. I'm so happy. Finally. Oh, crying out loud. It's, uh, it was just nine or 11 days or whatever it was, but it felt, um, it was super fun, obviously, but, uh, but it was a lot. And I'm, and I'm going away again on Wednesday. Jackie Cash is here, by the way, opening for Brian Regan in New York and, and Boston. So I was just thinking of my favorite Brian Regan line, which is go my favorite sports team go. (laughs) <laughs> to me, that that encapsulates the human condition. We all want to belong to something, uh, yet we won't do the work to actually understand what we want to belong to. <laughs> right. It's so right. great. It's so great. He's, uh, one of my favorite sports jokes of his is uh, mm-hmm. where they never mic the people asking the questions. Oh. So it's always like, and, uh, and then it's... And then the answers just sound cryptic and weird because we don't know what the question was. And yeah. um, and his least favorite question that's asked on the field of, of coaches is, is this a must-win situation? <laughs> and, <laughs> and, if, and if it's like a five out of seven, he waits for someone to go, actually, no. No. I, I, how math works, uh, this actually isn't a must-win. We could lose two more. <laughs> Oh, very yeah. funny. Well, uh, yeah, he's brilliant, and uh, you're so lucky you get to work with them. For how, how many dates are you doing? Um, I think it's four nights, four shows. So, um, same place? No, no, we're, we're doing Worcester, Mass. Someplace that might be Huntington, New York. Oh, Buffalo, and then Huntington. That's it. Two nights in Huntington, and Huntington seems to be in Long Island. So I'm flying yeah, into right. I'm flying into Boston and I'm flying out of JFK. Okay. Cool. So, did you did you uh do you arrange all your own flights like it's just sort of a buyout like a chunk of money or what? No, they used to do that. He used to do that. Um and then there was you you got a buyout for air and hotel. Mm-hmm. And he always stays at a very nice hotel and I would always stay at a Hilton uh Hampton Inn and then you kind of pocketed the difference. Um, but there was a couple instances where people were hard to group. So he started saying, you guys, I know what you're doing and I completely approve of the pocketing of extra cash, but you have to stay where I'm staying now. And you have to, you know, and he's going to, and and they had always done the airlines, but, um, so like I opened for him at Carnegie hall, like four or five years ago. Yeah. And I I remember. The four seasons. God. I stayed at like some sort of fancy pants. The first time I worked, one of the first times I did, well, the first time I worked with him was here in California, but the first time I did the road was a Florida gig and he stayed at mm-hmm. a four seasons. I think it was. And there was a, fa- there was a long driveway up to the four seasons and it had the weirdest water fountain. It was like three life size stone pumas that were holding up a water fountain and I wow. just pointed and laughed and he was like, what's funny? And I said, your career. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it weird how we can cosplay being rich sometimes as comics? Like yeah. I was in, a month and a half ago, I was in Telluride and hanging around with billionaires and a very successful, successful musicians in the same tent. We're all eating the same food. Staying in a nice place, you know. We're all eating the same food. <laughs> they didn't then, get gold flakes. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, uh, my ride to the airport changed because we had to pick up musicians, and I didn't want to send an extra shuttle driver for just me. So, uh, yeah, it it fell apart so quickly. But every once in a while, you get a taste, you know, of incredible success, and it's like, wow, this must be this must be wonderful to have all the time. I never, uh, I, you know, I, I always, um, I'm like, it always makes me laugh whenever there's mostly because I want to stab somebody. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. I'm just like, it's, it's always like I, my, ac- this is my acupuncturist that I've told you this is in Ca- Calabasas yeah. and I went to their Rite Aid and I go to our Rite Aid for, for uh, prescriptions for Christ. And Van Nuys. And Van Nuys. Yes. Very different 
than the yeah. than the Rite Aid in Calabasas. And I was talking to the woman who um, is the receptionist, essentially, at the acupuncturist. And I was saying, I just walked through the widest aisles. Nothing was locked up. It was just everything was in stock. There was a lot of things on sale. There was a self-checkout at a Rite Aid. Give me a break. And um, oh, they had those at CBS. Yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, they did. Not, not the not the Rite Aid on Woodman. Okay, gotcha. On, gotcha. On, on Woodman and Sherman Way. There's gotcha. uh yeah. And so but the the woman uh the uh the the woman the receptionist was like, Why is that funny? And I said, Well it has to be funny because it's not fair and I want to stab somebody. And uh <laughs> and she was like, Oh, I completely relate. Um, Those are but yeah. your only options, yes. Well, because the one the that gig that uh, I did with Vargas Mason and April Macy and Alicia Cooper, where we we were supposed to go to Afghanistan, but we ended up in Africa, yeah. Oman and Kuwait. Um, the Africa gig, for some reason, they decided to show us the hotel that they often, but not us. <laughs> what wait, put wait, up in the comics? What, J- what Djibouti. Country? Okay. It's it's right. It's That's just north of Ethiopia. Of okay. Well, right. it's a, it's essentially a city state, right? It's a okay. very small. It oh, was created so that uh, the United States, France, Great Britain, and uh, some other NATO could all have troops there. So they just we oh. all have bases. Yeah. It's like it was, the Diego Garcia of Africa. Have you ever heard of Diego Garcia? Not offhand. It's this little island. I did shows there during the, my Gulf War tour. <laughs> um, and it's like this little island that uh, Britain, uh, of course, took over, as it's going to do. Like Falklands. And, uh, yes. Yeah. And uh, they kind of use it as a, a, a refuel. They used it. I think it may, have ch- it may have changed hands, if I remember. But they used it for at the time to refuel for uh, the Gulf War. So so it sounds like it, that's a similar you know. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's on the it's essentially on the east coast of uh, the continent of Africa. It is close to everything, and okay. we, we, <clears throat> yeah. So, but they took us to the hotel, and it had one of those infinity pools, <laughs> and a lot of dudes in um, speedos that looked like they had too much money. And uh, and they were probably cast as villains in American action movies, right? And um, and then there were some uh, African businessmen at Vargas Mason, and I was like, "Dude, do not go up to them." He was like, "When am I going to be in Africa again?" Because they were all wearing like African business guard. I mean, yeah. they were they were wearing traditional clothing of their country, yeah. But they were dressed up because they were at meetings, right? And he wanted pictures with them. And I was like, you're both adorable and the ugly American. And uh, <laughs> nothing to be done. And uh, they were very patient with him. So that was very nice. So he's... Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, it's always anyway. nice to be treated uh, like a movie star by an American, you know? So, hey, right? No, I don't know. No, I, I don't know. Yeah, let's let's just say, I don't know. Probably not, yeah. but okay, so be it. Jackie, you brought it up. I'm commenting. That's it. Right. <laughs> That's and, the uh, whole podcast. <laughs> that, is, that is the whole podcast. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I got off the airplane uh, an hour ago, and here we are. And um, I sold every single piece of merch I brought. <laughs> I sold 120 hats. I sold 50 challenge coins. The gross on that is four thousand dollars. I know. I cannot handle how much money your merch makes. It's um, it's yes. unbelievable to me. I am still in the red on the hats because I had you know, to buy 500 of them. I can't, also I got yeah. I bought uh, 25 of our beanies that say "Kills Like a Guy." With Andy's oh, yeah. incredible, you know. Oh, the uh, good graphic. art. Yeah. Oh, so good. Um, and it came in a gigantic box, 25. And I'm like, oh, my God, she has, uh, I don't know, what, uh, 25 into 500? I don't know. I'm not, uh, she has 20 of these? What the <laughs> fuck? Do you have an extra garage? Like, that is ridiculous. It's a massive yeah. amount of stuff to store. 
Right. And well, now I only I have less than five. I now I have three hundred and you know because I probably sold twenty or thirty of them online. You'll be out by so the now end. I, by three hundred and fifty March. You're done by March. I well, hopefully, yeah, it'd be great to have uh, worked through uh, worked through them by by spring because they're beanies. <laughs> yes, uh, it's kind of the perfect time, though. So yeah, it really is. Um, and we want people buying this stuff before global warming hits, and they don't need to. <laughs> well, you know what? They're going to need to cover their heads for the melanoma. So either way, I think we're good. Um, no, Jackie, I know that you're storing 500 hats. I'm so glad it's fewer because I feel less guilty for pointing out I've got like a nine foot by 20 foot speaker in my garage right. that we used once. Right. Uh, you were, I was telling somebody, about, I, th- I think I was telling Carmen Morales about it, about because uh, I, I still want to do, we should do, figure out how, and we don't have to, f- I mean, here's how he did it. Uh, Eugene Merman. Yeah. started that comedy festival essentially in New York at a space yeah. where he just, it was, he called it a comedy festival. It was just yeah. a once a year party that he threw yeah. with t- a dozen of his favorite comics. Right, right, right. And that's all he did. It was just a yeah. couple of days of stand up comedy. And, um, and then I guess there might've been some panels or some podcasts or I don't know oh, what that would was. be fun to do. I mean, Oh, if yeah. We did it. Yeah. If we did it at, at one of our houses, the venue would be free. But that would be fun to have a panel in your backyard with like major comics or something. Right. Uh, well, like we could do it. We could. It does seem like a lot of work. And I think that we, I wouldn't want to do it in one of our yards because I wouldn't mind doing it in a venue where it would just, we would just have better, better microphones. Right. Uh, but I mean, we, we have the PA, remember? Kyle? I, mean, I don't You think were the what? He suggested it. Yes. Well, no, and, no, was uh, did, no, didn't Kyle do the tech on it the one time we used it in the backyard? Yeah. He yeah, he plugged it in and uh turned it on. Oh. Wow. <laughs> that's that's got to burn. That's got to burn, Clark. <laughs> that's <laughs> the non-existent podcasting union it's coming up oh um no but but uh yeah i was just like trying to clean out what left what little room i have and i was like this fucking thing it just right so much it's enormous space. and as to right. protect it i can't like throw shit all over you know right but oh, but my. uh but i will i will think about that in my copious amounts of free time but i will yes. uh figure out when we could, could do we such sell a thing it or whatever um but uh, let's see. Yeah, so um, that sounds like an incredible week. I just had I had spots here. My, um, you know, I had some fun shows. I was at uh, Comedy Magic last night. That was fun. I know. I saw your post where because <laughs> you got chased. What was it on the way home? Oh no, on the way to there was a car. You know those like SUV cop cars that they don't yeah. have lights on top. So so from behind it's either a black SUV unless you can see the white car doors, which I couldn't because of the way right. we angled. Um, or it's a cop car and I'm like, fuck, fuck, fuck. And, uh, and so I was driving like a little nun for like, yeah. Uh, how, how do you, right. So you thought a cop was following you for like 10 minutes yes. and it turns out it was just one of the, because they just get normal SUVs now. And so everything looks like a cop car it sucks. and it does suck because you're following the rules. No, but whatever. Yeah, it does but, uh, suck because I like to break the law, Jackie. I think you're a rebel. We all know that. <laughs> but but here's what I want to know: What do you do? What is your what is your think system when you when you are in real okay, life or so not real what, life being followed? So I was going down the four hundred five, and I I went in front of the cop car without signaling, and as I as I went over, I'm like, oh, is that a cop car that I just cut off? a cop car. Oh, fuck. And so then I thought he was following me, waiting to see if I did one more thing. Right. Like maybe that wasn't enough to pull me over for. He just wanted one more thing. Maybe he's running my plates, you know, (laughs) uh, not that I've done a crime that I know of, but still you never know what they're, what they're calculating with their little machines and their little (laughs) desire to crush. And, uh, and then, and then he moved over and he was just a regular guy. But I was, I was just, you know, I, I'm not going to make any quick lane changes. I'm not going to 
change lanes at all. You know, I'm just going to. Do you go exactly the speed limit or do you go like two over because you're a tiny rebel? I was just doing what everyone else is doing, including the cop. I wasn't slowing down, including the non-cop. But yeah, I I don't try to make it dramatic because that's also a. Oh my God. I, it turns out I turn into, I I start writing backstory and like, it just becomes ridiculous whenever I'm in real life or think I'm being followed by a cop. Uh, I am like, I literally, I start singing in an effort to act nonchalant, Lori. (laughs) Jack, are you belting Sheena Easton? My baby takes the morning train. Is that Sheena Easton? Interesting. Yes. Okay. Okay. I remember Um, I went from being a Sheena Easton girl to a Chrissy Hine girl within two years. That's a major, major change of personality. It sure is. That is. That's a maturity level that really. Did you start having your period? What happened? Is it- uh, possibly. Lots of shit went down when I was 13. Um, <laughs> wow. No, no truer words were ever spoken about anybody. 13's exactly. a hard year. It's the worst. Um, but my son turned 17 on Friday. Nice. Oh, it's a lot. I, he he told me he feels like he hasn't done enough and he feels old. And I'm like, oh, there's no fixing this feeling that it just exists all the time. He's oh, yeah. like, oh, there's like younger people that are animating and doing more. And I, I don't have time because of school. I'm like, what are you dropping out to animate? <laughs> um, and uh, we went to, uh, <laughs> Pat Oswald. You know, I wrote some jokes for him uh, in Montreal a year and a half ago. And I got paid for that. And he also gave me a gift certificate for $250 to this really nice series of restaurants called, uh, I don't know, it's on Highland and Melrose. It's a bunch okay. of Italian restaurants. And they're all like under the same roof, but they're different. One of them's a Michelin. So we went to the pizza version of it. And um, we... And his dad came too, and we spent, it was a $250 gift certificate, and we spent $300 on pizza <laughs> foods. They were, right. we, we did get a $68 you- cut of steak that we all split. Like, we just got a, all the most expensive yeah. things and, and split it three ways just to see what they tasted like. Um, yeah. So it was, it was really nice. That's and nice. uh, he got a ton of, he got some uh, manga from me and uh, clothes from his dad I- and- I got a, uh, I got him a carton of cigarettes and a bottle of Jack. Is that okay? <laughs> he feels right. old, so we might as well start acting like he's fifty. I got, I got him a graphic novel um, that that I then gave to my nephew. Uh, but I'm just gonna, <laughs> well, because it occurred to me because I was having lunch with uh, with them yesterday in Milwaukee, uh, uh-huh. so. I was like, you know, I think Eric would like this as well. And so I'm just going to get another copy because I think that they would both. Because uh, I don't think he's read Why the Last Man, has he? Does that sound familiar? I don't, I don't know. He has okay. so many, so much I don't know. Uh, isn't it wild, though, when you just think of our ancestors just 100 years ago, that you can say yesterday I was in Milwaukee and here you are in Los Angeles right now. It's crazy. It is. Um, Jackie, and sometimes I, I like to think about how far humanity has come when we are <laughs> bombing ourselves into oblivion. Well, you you have to think about how far we've come because otherwise uh, you would be very, very depressed all the time. You have to think about civilization and, and, the, and the strides we've made and the fact that there are definitely people who want us to go backwards. And there are definitely people who want to end it all because they think these are the yeah. end times. But, At least to heaven. Um, there's right. no talking these people out of what they believe if they think this. There's evangelicals in this country that want exactly what's happening in the Middle East to to get worse. Right. So they, they think the rapture's heaven. coming. They think the rapture's oh, coming. They don't know what so the rapture disgusting. is. It's pretty bad. Uh, but um, I am going to lateral move and tell you about. Okay. So we went to Philadelphia. And hmm. here's, of course, the great thing about opening for the Maria Bamford fan base, which uh, m- many of whom like me, but a lot of them, most of whom don't know who I am. Like there's there's a, like a third of them are like, oh, good. Uh, you've opened for her before or they know me from whatever. And um, but her fan base is so attentive and she's working on this new bit. We both have these giant bits that. 
don't have enough punchlines, but the audiences are interested, uh, which of course makes you want to just infuriate, right? It just makes you want to go, I'm the worst. Why aren't there 19 more punchlines? Well, because right. it's not done yet. It turns out. Yes. It, this, so my America chunk reminds me a lot of the they, them chunk. I think it's going to take, it's going to take time. Maria's got a new chunk about money. That's going to take time. It's like her 12 step chunk. It took a long time to get that thing to work. And now it's tight as fuck. It's so yes. good. Yes. And, uh, so, but so we go to Philadelphia, we do helium, um, for five shows across the street from the Philly helium is a junk store, uh, which isn't a real, did I, did I tell you this? Uh, I don't know. Cause I, somebody said that that was a term from our childhood and I thought it was you. Oh, that is a I, term from my, it, you might have. Yeah. I, I might've last episode talked about finding these books. From when yes. I was a kid. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's what happened. And then and the shows were good and it was all good. And then we, then we went to Pittsburgh and, um, just one show at the Pittsburgh improv mm-hmm. and that was sold out and was pretty fun. And we walked around Pittsburgh a fair bit. Um, and then we went to Chicago for five shows at the den and wow. nice. Did you stay at that hotel that used to be? That has like a pool at the very bottom that they, tr- you know what I'm talking about? At like an old, at like a, a, a ho- it used to be maybe a post a, office. A Hilton property. Oh yeah. That's so oh, no. yeah. Okay. And, um, and it was about two miles from the venue and I rented oh, a car okay. so I could drive up to Milwaukee thinking, oh, they'll have valet parking. It might be 50 bucks a night. I got the car for free on points. Right. Okay. Uh, well, they don't have valet parking. They only have self parking and it's $55 a night. And the front desk was like, but if you put, do you have the app, this app? And I was like, what app? It's a parking app. And you find the cheapest parking in cities. And oh, so God, you sat in San Francisco and it's all well and good, the app, but it, uh, he helped me pick the parking lot. And it doesn't have in and out privileges, but it was going to be like a hundred bucks, hundred and ten dollars. And so, I park the car. I on Wednesday when we get there, we don't have a show that night. So I go, I hang out with my dad, and uh, and then I come back, and then I park the car. I don't touch the car again until Saturday morning. I've used the app. I've paid a hundred and ten dollars, and I have the ticket and the app, and I go to the the front window because I'm like. How do I do this? And the guy goes, well, first of all, you're in the wrong lot. So it's going to be another $300. <gasps> Wait, how did they let you in? I just got a ticket. Oh, no. Going in. Yeah. So wait, it cost you $410 to park? <gasps> yes. Which is what the car was going to cost. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. What the fuck? I know it was a lot. And, but, and Darla was like, well, if you call Amex, you never use that lot. So you might get the hundred dollars back. So were you, and I know you were, because I know you now tempted to run over this employee. who told you <laughs> I was, I, there was a brief moment when I thought, well, you should be mad. And then I realized he didn't make me park incorrectly. He I mean, there is a power in those parking lot guys. They he could have just let me out and it wouldn't yeah. have cost him anything. Right. But just and I only know that because of, of people that I know that have worked at parking lots here in LA. You could just let people out. But you they have to be inspired to do that. And I had been mm-hmm. nice enough to him that I was really hoping that he would be inspired to do that. It turns out he was not inspired to do that, Lori. Jackie. So did, were you wearing, uh, did you show him any titty? I, did, I didn't even show him a clavicle. Nothing. Well, what do you expect? What do you expect? I know. You have those enormous tatas <laughs> and you kept them buttoned up while you're oh, trying to save money. You guys, you should see my clavicles. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird that it's plural. It should just be clavicle. That's what I say. <laughs> I don't want to go off on that tangent again. I know it bores everybody. 
<laughs> Every six months, welcome to Clavicle Talk, your your spinoff podcast. Um, you know, it's, it's weird. I was like, um, I, Marin is like killing it. WTF is just so good, you know. And he's, I, he's I taught, wish I listened to it. It's great. And he taught, you know, I love the monologues. I know comics have made fun of it, but I'm like obsessed with like, what's he doing in his career? What's happening now? Because his, his feelings about stand-up are, they're more similar to ours than a lot of the younger comics we work with that what, are, what, are starry-eyed, what, right? Wait, maybe we should start a segment where you review his monologues, because I would <laughs> like to hear about his monologues secondhand. <laughs> um, you're about to. Uh, <laughs> and he's about, about Israel and being Jewish, and it's, it, it's just really good, and, and he's definitely, he's not naming names, but he fucking hates the right wing uh, half of comedy, and I love it. There's not a lot of guys Pardo as well, but there's not a lot of guys that are just like, this is fucking bullshit. Everyone's sort of like trying to, you know, stay friends or whatever. Um, and he's just doesn't give a fuck. Um, and I think he's just not naming names to, you know, so that he doesn't free. complicate. Yeah. Yeah. But you know who he's talking about. And, and you know who he's like, talking about. And you know that if he ran into him in real life, he wouldn't talk to them. <laughs> probably not Even he would he not she was prickly in real life you know so yeah <laughs> well he... it's just like i remember and this is I do, I do not believe i'm talking out of school by talking about that todd glass seeing louis ck right after uh the the, oh, the i don't know about the thing. it todd class yelled across the room we don't talk anymore to to todd to louis ck do you, do you ever like hear that todd story glass. i, I think love i might glass. have I did, yeah. and I when I when I opened for Gary Goldman a couple like a month ago at Largo, Todd was there, and I was I oh just, neat. I I, I'm, I told him I think I've said this. I'm like, had we started together, I think we'd be best friends. Like I just love you, but I never see you, and we don't have enough shared memories. But I'm just your one of your biggest fans, and I love you. So I just told him that. Oh, um, but so so with Mar so. Mark Marin had Larry Charles on and it's a great interview and um, that it's just sort of like Larry Charles was talking about, he, he gets along with everybody and um, he's talking about Bill Maher. He, he did something with Bill Maher. He's like, yeah, he's, you know, he's fine. And, uh, and you know, that was dragging <laughs> Marin crazy, but also he's like, fine. It, yeah. You know, you get damned to, with you know, faint praise, I believe is the term. No, it's, it's more like I guys, can exist in a way where they can interact with other guys that are awful, awful people, but that, that person's not awful to them. So they don't see it. You know, it's like how white yeah. people can talk to uh, someone who's a racist, but maybe because they don't bring anything up. You're like, you just think they're normal. Right. Right. So it's, it's a, it's so, a but, common problem. Yes. Yeah. So he was just talking about, you know, working with Russell Brand and, you know, he's very professional, very cool. <laughs> Like, uh -huh. so it's, uh, you know, if you're a guy and you work with Russell Brand, he's one way. He's, he mm -hmm. just seems like a reasonable, smart guy. And if you're, and then I remembered all the accounts of women who had been raped by him saying his eyes go black, his soul leaves his body and he just <laughs> starts attacking you. I'm like, these were two, we're talking about the same guy. Is that verbatim? Is that but, how they, is that how they yes. literally described it? Yes. Yes. She, yes. Shit. And it's just so, it just made me feel like, think about the business and how many times women, we maybe not even articulating in our heads, kind of like take ourselves out of situations because we're not sure about this one or we, you know what I mean? Like you're, you're constantly not comfortable with everybody, like every man. Yep. So you sort of pull yourself out and to take yep. and don't realize all the business opportunities you're missing. Because mm -hmm. this guy, your spidey senses have correctly said you don't want to be alone in a room with this guy. Now, men don't have that spidey sense about a lot of these guys. And they just, they start making business deals and everyone gets rich. Right. Now, if you right. marry one of these guys, maybe you'll be rich. But if you're actually the actor or the female comic or whatever, you're kind of like just left out of a lot of shit because guys don't have to uh, protect themselves that way. I don't know. No, Whatever. Well, they're, it just they're made not me high sad on, the, on yeah. the drive home. It's a long drive home from Hermosa. And I was like, right. It was a long uh, drive home. And, and a lot of those guys are in that, those green rooms, right? They're just old dinosaur dudes that are just kind of hanging out. And Karen 
Dinosaurs. And, 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 new, and baby dinosaurs. Oh, People, baby dinosaurs. Dinosaur will be dinosaurs soon. <laughs> Hello, baby dinosaurs. But, <laughs> but, you know, it just, it, it, it's, uh, it's just a shame. And then I just start thinking about so many female geniuses, so many comedy female geniuses that I know that have just disappeared for whatever reasons that I don't know. And some male geniuses have disappeared too, but I just uh, was a little sad. Oh, yeah. Well, on that note about female geniuses, let's take a quick break. Yay. And then let's talk quickly about, or at length, about this week's <laughs> comic of the week. This week's comic of the week. You know, uh, I have been slightly jealous because you have been getting uh, – just comics showing up in your Instagram feed. Right. I got one show up in our, my Instagram feed and we had a conversation before this where you're like, is she Canadian? Why have we never heard of her? <laughs> and, uh, well, also, right, her, her name is, her name is very French. So I'm like, right, she's so, either from France or she's from Quebec <laughs> or whatever, right? She's not from France. And, uh, and I cannot figure out if she, I do not believe her to be Canadian, but her name is Isabel Pierre. And she's fucking hilarious. Uh, I was wa- I watched uh, like like three of her reels, and then I went to her website, and she has a bunch of stuff. She also has uh, a part in the new Loki TV show, and so she is, you know, one of the great multitasking uh, comics of, of the Los Yay. Angeles area, where Heck she's yeah. creating her own content. She's acting. She's doing stand up. Very funny, Isabel Pierre. Content. What is- What's her what's her handle? What's her Yeah, the the Isabella. Is it, it no, it's Isabelle with it's e, e, B E L L E, right? Right. Okay. Oh, not... I thought it was. See, Jackie, there we that's go. why I thought she was French. Every every American is named Isabella. That's that's one of the top oh. names for the last twenty years. Uh, and Isabel is uh, very French. That's why that's why I made that assumption. Correct or incorrect? Si j'étais un garçon, j'aurais un zizi. Wow, Holy there seems shit. to be some sort of uh, peel it out <laughs> happening in somebody's <laughs> neighborhood. Get the fuck out of Burbank around here. But tell me the the setup to that joke of hers that you were telling me. Oh. Right, right. Oh, she was just doing a little bit. It was, it was a joke that had the tiniest amount of crowd work. And yeah. because of c- content requirements, she posted the <laughs> joke. <laughs> and, uh, she said she was talking about who her favorite, she is black and she was talking about her favorite white women. And then she was pointing to different women in the audience who were clearly black. She was like, who's your favorite white woman? And no, not, the two women that she pointed to, there was not even a beat of silence. They were just like <laughs> Scarlett Johansson. One. Yeah, they had. That was the only one I remembered because that's a uh, Jackie. Black widow. Are, do you think either of us is a black woman's favorite white woman? <laughs> that would be so exciting. <laughs> Let us know. We're trying so hard to be good. Let us know. <laughs> I'm an okay ally, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. So. We did the Chicago and, and I, I like Chicago. Uh, if Chicago is a little bit like New York in the way that to live in Chicago, I would have to live in a doorman building, quite honestly. Right. And, um, but it's, uh, it, it has, uh, I, because I spent the, I drove from Milwaukee. Uh, from Chicago to Milwaukee twice, and my father, of course, was like, "You didn't go. You took. You did. You went around the toll roads, right? Which is something we've been doing for seventy years, going around the toll <laughs> roads, of so course. that Illinois doesn't get six dollars. Uh, and and it, Shell Oil gets seventy dollars in gas. <laughs> well, and it and it is a prettier the Waukegan forty one or whatever it's called. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a prettier ride because all the fall colors are in. In, yeah. in, uh, it's, it was gorgeous. It's changing. Yeah. And yes. And we, uh, so we went, um, yeah. And I, and I picked up a bunch of new paintings for my dad. My dad, uh, he did a, a series of different cows. And yeah. I think I might have told you about them, but they're you just did. like yeah. whimsical. And I was like, why are you painting so many cows? He was like, I'm feeling whimsical. And uh, which is good. He's probably trying to not think about uh, Artsek, you know, and uh, 
which by the way, that painting behind me right there. Yeah. Yeah. That is uh, a piece of art that was an Armenian sculpture. It's probably 25, 30 feet tall. Wow. And it's, it's a, it's a couple, it's a man and a woman. And uh, it's an Armenian sculptor. He, it, he put it there in 1967 in Azerbaijan. It's always been Azerbaijan. I'm not saying that it's not ethnically Armenian. And watching Armenians being marched out of Azerbaijan, super right. triggering. But right. um, the this is, you know, that's a, it was an Armenian sculptor. And now there's Azeri flags all over. They've just posted Azari flags all over. But here's the thing. I don't mean to go Indiana Jones on everybody, but that belongs yeah. in a museum. Yeah, that's what it does. Okay. It belongs yeah. in a museum. Uh, I'm not going to disagree with an Armenian talking about Armenian things. I'm all on your side uh, always. <laughs> always. And are you also on the side of Indiana Jones that belongs in a museum? Sure. I mean, there you that go. feels like... It's part of what it's important to you. And as a friend, I'm on that. I'm on your side. <laughs> and here's I what I'd like. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. I, I have a, I have a topic change. So if you have more Armenian things to say, lay them on me. No, I was just going to say um, one of my favorite things about Israel are the salads. So uh, it wasn't really. <laughs> <laughs> Please make a lateral move. I yes. do love an Israeli salad. And that's our commentary on the Middle East this week, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> I will say that, uh, you know, I've been, I don't even know, like, I've just been posting tons of ceasefire sort of stuff, you know? Right. And retweeting, we re retweeting people that seem to have a better grasp on what's happening than me. Uh, who, yes. You know, uh, it's, I, I, I can't imagine what it's like to either be Muslim or Jewish right now and see all this going on. So whenever, you know, a Jewish comic is perhaps reacting in well, a way no, where but... you're like, oh, I'm not sure about that. I'm like, I don't know. I have not had my whole life being called that slur. What, what You know what I mean? Like, have you ever seen like just a Jewish person on Twitter they will post like replies to stuff and it's all this anti-Semitic shit. And you're just like, Oh, this person, they get this shit all the time. And it's not a world I live in. I don't get it at right. all. Right. Right. And right. so, uh, I don't know. There's a, seem, feels like there's a couple comics that are like, seems like they're, they're accidentally, maybe not intentionally. Leaning are they high? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I do feel like, oh, you know, if you have people in Israel, you've been, maybe that's going to make you a little more emotional in that direction. Understandably. I, I don't know. All I know is I, I, I'm retweeting a lot of stuff about Palestine and Palestinians and a please God, let a ceasefire happen as soon as possible. So these kids can stop being buried by rubble, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is, uh, it's a fucking nightmare is what it is, honestly. Yes. And, um, and it's just every, it's all bad guys in charge, right? It's yes. not the people of Israel and it's not the people of the, the Gaza. It is, the Hamas, which is a separate organization who is willing to sacrifice just because they've had it. They're, they're, they're like, maybe the world will care if they watch what, and Netanyahu, I'm willing to say it, is a goddamn monster. And he always has said. been. And yeah. it's not, nobody's surprised to say that out loud. I believe the, the, his approval rate right now in Israel is 30%, which is 30% more than it ought to be. <laughs> and uh but right. there you go and but yeah. i also understand you know the fear of the fact that they're surrounded by people who wish to annihilate them and but but it feels like yeah. the people of palestine are as well just or the yeah, palestinians exactly. are as well because exactly. they're not being allowed into into egypt they're not being allowed into jordan right so so nobody jordan has a ton of palestinian refugees from oh, previous situations oh, yeah yeah the queen of jordan is palestinian uh, okay. Queen Rania, she she made a very eloquent video. It's just, it's it's like, you know, like oh, I, I don't know too, you know, I don't know enough. So I watched, read a lot, watched a documentary, Good. and it's like oh, now that I'm fully informed, 
I have no nope. fucking way how to solve this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> huh. This seems tough. Uh, good luck to diplomats and everyone who does it, but you know, uh, let's stop the killing of children as soon as possible. I don't, I hope that's yeah. not a controversial statement. No, you know what I mean, and I'm, I'm even willing to stop the killing of adults yes. in other news. Uh, I got a new phone. Yeah. Just going to bring it back to nothing. Lori going to bring it back to a lot of, that's, oh. that's what comedians do. We're, we're posting our anti-genocide tweets and then hey, in between in between my new merch, you guys. <laughs> and uh, oh so, so yeah. So selling the merch, I didn't, uh, I didn't realize I have the, the 15 that I, I, cause my, my 11 was pokey and slow. And so they, I did a trade in. And so I got a new iPhone. And it's the one that has the new adapter. So my square no longer works with that phone. So I need to get uh, where I would plug. If I had a a Bluetooth one, it would be fine, but I don't care enough. I would rather spend $30 where I plug my lightning into an adapter and then that lightning turns into a USB-C. It's a great story. But here's the scoop. Um, Never got it. So I have a, a laminated venmo paypal yeah i saw so I saw your merch setup it was very impressive yeah. yeah so uh people were they were doing cash or they were doing venmo or paypal and when i believe it was comedy on state or it was comedy works made that that flyer for me they also put a tip qr code <laughs> for no reason and people tipped me so yeah nice uh, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, stand-up comics. Everybody has $5 that they would also like to just give you if they don't want a hat or a shirt or something. They just want to toss you some cash. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, 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 not to, but I was listening to Marin and Stanhope talk. Yeah. Which, oh, Jackie, wow. you got to love that. When it's I do comics our age talking about comedy today, it's mm-hmm. heaven. Right. Yeah. I got to sit in these green rooms and pretend I'm like, oh, what, you know, like I'm into everyone's uh, content (laughs) strategy when really I don't want to do it at all. And to listen to Stan Hope just go, that's I just don't I got into comedy, so I didn't have to do anything all day. (laughs) Yeah, that's not exactly why. But that was one of the perks. Mm -hmm. It's a (laughs) perk started. All right. And, yeah. and, and they were just saying like these comics, these, they work all fucking day. And what is required of us now is to work all day to do this shit. And it, and I fucking hate it. Yeah. And, and I'm not converting over to liking it. I'm trying to make myself, you know, do trying it. to have a good attitude. Yep. But I can't. I, I, that is so noticeable, by the way, that you're trying <laughs> to have a good attitude. I see that. <laughs> Guess what? I, what? I got my son for his birthday, you know, Cameo. I love yeah. Cameo. Oh, right. I've only done it a couple times, but I should do it okay. more because. So uh, Carl from The Walking Dead, his name is Chandler Riggs, that actor. His, he was a kid in The Walking Dead. I think we met him when he was like eight. And through, I'll just tell you, you might not watch it and you'll forget I don't. if you okay. get to it. But I think when he was 13, he ended up dying. So, but we spent his whole childhood, most of his childhood with him, rooting him on, thinking he was going to be a leader. Ended up, he ended up uh, getting bitten by a walker. And uh, it was heartbreaking. And apparently it's not in the comic books, according to my son. That is fucking ridiculous. He should have been. Ugh, so annoying. Because it, he was a great actor, it was he is one, and it's a great character, and that loss was so unnecessary. Anyway, I think I I wrote this in my little screed to him, <laughs> <sighs> who was also beheaded. I An- mean, it's another spinoff podcast, you guys. The Walking Dead. <laughs> Good. Are you bored listening to us talk about something? <laughs> Good. Ha ha. Welcome to my life. For the last Ten years. So. um Anyway, he did a, a cameo. It was like 140 bucks for my kid okay. on his birthday. And he was, a weird he was really fun. It was nice. Yeah. Well, with tax and stuff. 
And uh, he did a nice job. And my son like replayed him saying, hey, what's up? You know, my son's name. What's up, dude? <laughs> like 5,000 times. And he loved it. And it was so easy. And I, um, you know, if, if anyone's out there stuck for a birthday present or something, you know, get a cameo. Oh, my God. It's nice. I forgot yeah. how cool it was. That is nice. Um, I, I yep. got one when my friend Cheryl Witter mom died. I got one from Morgan Fairchild for Cheryl because she liked Morgan Fairchild. And Aww. Morgan Fairchild talked about her uh, loss she had had. She's just doing one cameo for one person. And she's kind of like cutting open a vein and talking about it. It's like really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Are, are they pre-recorded yeah. or is it an interaction? No, no, no. You you say who's this for? What's their name? What are they into? So he brought he brought out my son. He said my son's name. He's like he talked about anime, water polo, being turning seventeen, and then he talked about a couple of his birthdays on The Walking Dead. You know how it and, and yeah. it just felt like it was a real personal thing. It was for my son, and it was cool. But it's pre recorded. It's not like a live Zoom. Oh, it's not live. No, they record okay. it and then they send it to you. Like they have a week to do it. And I and I ordered it not in a week's time. So he had to turn it around quicker and he did. He, we got it the day before my son's birthday. So it was pretty awesome. Maria did, Maria was doing them. Uh, cameo. She's on cameo. I bet. I, uh, when I, I was asked to do cameo after my mom died. They, they were contacted me. Oof. I was like, what? What? Is, what? I can't imagine the amount of I'm sorry for your losses I'm going to have to do. No one's yeah. going to ask me to do anything else. Right, right, right. Um, I will say, so yesterday I went to Milwaukee and had lunch at Irv's Mug with my nephews and my dad, my sister-in-law. And um, and then Maria had a daytime book signing. Her and Aparna Nancherla oh, did a dual... Nice a dual book signing. Oh my God. And so hers was, uh, was, I think it was 10 AM to 1 PM. So she got back at like two and I got back at like five. Cause I brought the, I brought the, because I didn't want to pay another hundred dollars for the car. I just brought the car back to the airport after I had lunch and then just took a lift back to the hotel. Though I think the train would have been like two bucks. Um, the lift was $35. So, but I was just like, because it was pushing five o'clock and the show started yeah, he, at seven. You had extraordinary automotive costs in this last visit. It was a Chicago. little, it was a little bit, but I had saved so much money by using the points for my credit card. I felt like it, it was okay in the, in the, why did the hour. universe need to extract $500 from you one way or another with via a car? That's I think it was I 380 know. in the, in the, Whatever. in the, in the final. Yeah. But yeah, I do like the much. feature creep that you're like, why was it $612? <laughs> why did that happen? And, uh, so yeah, I didn't get to see a part. I would have liked to have gone to their book signing, but they didn't even read. Uh, Maria said they just, uh, they just signed. So interesting. All right. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Hey, uh, can we take another break real quick? Yeah. So what do you have this week? Uh, I've got more spots in town and I'll be putting in for more. Um, and then uh, we I have water polo mom stuff this week. Halloween. We have uh, right, our right. CF, I don't know, some conference finals in Santa Monica on, on Halloween Tuesday afternoon. Night? <gasps> it's like five o'clock at night. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get back to the house till seven. I'm going to miss a bunch of kids. Yeah, stuff. yeah. That does. Uh, and my... My son has a Luffy costume and what's that? He, Luffy's from One Piece. He's the okay. lead in One Piece. Oh, he okay. looks exactly because he's very tall. He's got these long, skinny arms. He he looks exactly like Luffy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to get him in a pose where he's got his arm out with a punch because Luffy has arms that extend. Uh, they're like stretchy arms, so they they can extend miles. And right. uh, so anyway. Well, that's because he's on a ship. He's got ranged attack from ship to ship. Is that what you're telling me? I, I tried. I watched about six episodes, but uh, the TV is kind of co-opted. It's hard to. And yeah. I don't watch. And the fact I, that, if I watch more television on my on my laptop, I think I would probably that would Luke, do it. One Piece 
doesn't end. That's the disturbing. I mean, they do keep coming up with great. And so we watched maybe like a hundred and I was like, I'm out. I I need an ending. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But um, they do keep coming up with great, you know, new. I I was like, they, they cannot top this one, this one villain that was like a butler to a princess. I'm like, oh, that guy was so good. (laughs) And, uh, and they, they kept matching it. I don't think they topped him. I thought he was the best villain. And then, uh, no, I haven't, no, I think I may have left before then, but my son, I know you're talking about. So anyway, so that's my Tuesday. And then, uh, and then they have another, if they beat the team, then it's Thursday. It's, it's one of those things that keeps extending if they keep winning. Right. We, they, there was a game on Thursday that, um, we were, we were losing dramatically. <laughs> like by the <laughs> first quarter, it's like, Oh, you know, so all the moms were like, we're cheering them on just to cheer them on. Right. And but you're like 10 to nothing or something or something like that. Right. Not good. Okay. And, uh, and then the fourth quarter, I guess the coach was like, well, let's just put everybody else in. Like, and they started putting people yeah. in and one of the kids who's never played a game has never been put in a game. Yep. He got put in and he got a goal. Rudy, Rudy, team, Rudy. Yes. They went insane. And then they started turning it around and they started getting more goals. And we're like, there's not enough time to make up. But we were screaming as if it was. And then I didn't have a voice for like two days. It's still kind of scratchy. But it was a lot of fun. Oh, good. Um, yeah. That is great. Mm-hmm. Um Halloween is the beginning of when I start watching uh, holiday movies. Okay. Uh, and so, and I also, uh, I'm cut two things. First of all, I'm psyched that Tuesday this week is, is the last Tuesday. Is it still in October? Because I've been on the road so much. I have not recorded the new intro because at the Dork Forest, I, I just have a, I don't have a Patreon or anything. I just have a mm-hmm. donation button and people donate. But in November and December, I asked people not to donate, but to donate to their local food bank. But I have to record a new intro so that, uh, so that they can do that. And, um, Okay. I didn't have to do it this week. I was pretty psyched about that. So, but I will have to do it for next week. Now, the other thing is movies. They start this week. It starts with the, with the, the, uh, the peanuts. Uh, uh. No, Hallmark. <laughs> it does not start with Hallmark. It starts with Abbott and Costello, uh, meet Frankenstein. It starts with Mr. The Ghost and Mr. Chicken, the Don Knotts movie. It starts with, uh, the, the new mutants movie that nobody liked but me. Uh, the, I own it on Blu-ray. We're, yes, we bought, the, we're the only ones. But what do you, uh, cause I can't do really scary movies cause they, uh, scare me. Congratulations, uh, people who make scary movies. Uh, but I can do silly scary and I can do, um, kind of Halloween. Like I tried to watch Hocus Pocus and I got, I became unnerved. <laughs> I haven't, uh, I haven't seen it. I'm just making notes about things I want to talk about when you're done talking about movies that I haven't seen. Okay. You haven't seen any of those? You haven't seen Abbott Hocus and Costello meet Frankenstein? No. Oh. Abbott and Costello? Up. You remember Abbott and Costello? They were famous yeah, I, when we no. were children. Uh, yeah, I didn't care for them then, and I guess what? I'm still the same person I was when I was four. Uh, I believe that. <laughs> anyway, what Jackie, would you like to talk our, about? Our Patreon is going to get their stickers. I can't tell you. <laughs> that, okay, so I, I what I do, my process, which is very analog, is I take screenshots of where every, everyone's address because um, the, the way the Patreon, it doesn't, it won't print it out. Like you can put it on a label yeah. and there's no way I'm, I'm trying to print on envelopes on my printer. It's just that that's going to take four days and then I'll throw the printer out. Yeah. So I take screenshots. I, I print them. I cut them out with scissors. Like I do one for the address and one for the return. So there's no way they're not going to get those stickers. And I paste them on with little glue sticks on every single fucking envelope and I Wait. lick the envelope with my own tongue. So Patreons are getting a lot of hard work. A lot of DNA, a lot of kill Martin DNA. DNA. Uh, 
Well, here's my question. So you don't have an Excel? I don't with, want with it addresses. And no, no one, no one okay. suggest any software. I figured okay. it out. <laughs> okay. This is fine. You have a, a plan. Little, you have a process. It's okay. an art project. I do while I'm watching television and it gets okay. done. It takes then it gets a little done. bit longer, but and I don't have to learn. Right. Excel. And that, and now there's extra. You probably have like 25 extra of every sticker that we've ever sent, right? And I lied. Let's, and let's bring stop. them. Well, let's okay. bring them to, to Austin. Okay. We will. It'll be uh, great. And, and, and we can give them to people and then people will possibly be encouraged to join the $10. Because if you join the $10, you'll get new ones every, you, you, every three months, you get three new stickers. About right. the, about I, do, the I do think we need to uh, move away from having them all be squares. Like, let's get some shapes next time. You know, oh, that's my. We'll talk oh. about that later. Okay. Yeah. Do you, do you, oh, do you want die cut? Like they're. I don't like know, but I, I got or I got little okay. centaur shapes for myself for a while, and they yeah, were cute. die I cut. Think we're sending all squares to people. You know, people have. Yeah. You know, I don't know. They have scissors. Something to think about. Yeah, something to think about. Okay. Okay. No, I'm also, with you. I, um, uh, oh, I had, you know, I, I do my nasal spray all the time to prevent COVID. Right. So I got this new nasal spray. I was using X clear. Um, okay. and it has like a little wide handles. You push the handles down and spray in your nose. So I got this new one that has a little bit higher percentage of, uh, COVID killing, whatever particles Drug? or whatever yeah. it, it has, it has a higher kill rate. The next player. Good, good. And uh, if you're gonna do the, it, do it right. The little handles don't go out as far, and so I I was about to go into Trader Joe's, and I did some squirts, and my sl- finger slipped up, and it shot up my nose, and I got a bloody nose. Like, oh no! I couldn't believe how much blood there was, and I was like, th- "Thank God this didn't happen right before a show." Like, they'll right. just make sure to be really careful with these little handles. Uh, because I, I would, I, I would, it didn't stop bleeding for like an hour. It was carnage. Wow. And, uh, it was like, uh, this, I would have had to cancel a show had this happened. There's no way. Right. You were going to go up with like toilet paper sticking out of your nose. It would have uh, been enough. It would have been so gross. Uh, this is what we've just learned here is also yes. why you don't have a boxing career. Uh, <laughs> someone pokes that's you in the, the nose. That's the reason. Yeah, that is that is entirely. Is that how they box? Do they stick st- something up your nose? I guess I've been watching a different kind of boxing, Jack. No, if you get hit in the nose and you're a bleeder, right. you're screwed. Uh, that's yeah. that's one of the. Yeah, I did. I did realize most of my medical training was from watching Mick treat Rocky <laughs> in the corner of Rocky Two. That's mostly what I know about being a doctor. What's what's uh, the um uh. uh Dang it, Warren Beatty and um, very famous funny girl Barbara Streisand movie yeah. from the late seventies, where he plays a boxer and she throws in the towel. Oh, yeah, I don't know. There you go. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's. I was guess what? never I get really. Yeah. I was never attracted to Warren Beatty, even in his prime. Although I was very young in his prime, but he, that but is I so was, weird. The event. I was, That's right. The event. I was young in Ryan O'Neill's prime, and I was like, "That guy's hot." But that's uh, interesting Warren because like, Warren Beatty looks like Greg Giraldo to me. But I have oh, that face thing. No. Yeah. No. So God knows they are all brown-haired dudes look the same to me. Um, wow, Jackie, that's shocking. All blonde-haired that's- dudes look the same. Kyle, if he wasn't six foot nine, uh, would I wouldn't recognize him. I'd be like, "What?" <laughs> I don't know how you got a slot, Kyle, but congratulations. <laughs> In the Rolodex, be a shape. <laughs> be a shape like Kyle or our next batch of stickers. <laughs> All right. The die cut ones are a lot more expensive. That's the only thing I'll say. We could do one that's a little more expensive as a okay. gift to our Patreons because we love it's them so true. much. It's true. It's true. Right. Jackie, shall we spend our last minute plugging our dates like these other comics do? Yes. At the first minute of their podcast. Oh, shoot. Well, we should. We could do that from the top. We could do it twice. Go for we it. We should. Okay. So we, you and I are in mm-hmm. Austin at the Creek in the Cave 
uh, in uh, September 9th, 10th, and 11th. 9th, we're doing a podcast. We'll do a little stand-up. And then 10 and 11, we're co-headlining. Guys, I can't, I hate to brag, but that is a fucking killer show. I don't even know if Austin deserves it, but they're getting it. Right. And here's what I would recommend. You come to the podcast and then you come to one of the stand-up shows. I know that that's 25 bucks a pop, but uh, I think we're never, we don't come. We don't ever come. And would you, you know say, what? how much is a concert, right? How, what, how about this? If you come to the podcast show, we'll, we'll get you a free notebook. How about that? What do you think? Oh, do you because know what that does? You got a lot of notebooks left, huh? I do have a lot of notebooks left. <laughs> They're so heavy. <laughs> They're really heavy, but, but uh, I, I, I can, I can pack some. I got luggage. Anyway, and and then for me, I'm at the Comedy Fort the following weekend in uh, Fort Collins. That's the 16th and 17th. That's a Friday, Saturday. That's and the 17th December. and 18th. 17th and 18th yes. of November. There you go. That's right. That's right. That's right. And then December 1st, I'm at Boxcar in uh, Utah. It's uh, right near Salt Lake City. It's a new club, and it's just that Friday night. And then Saturday, I'll be going to New York for bang out some spots. But come out to that Salt Lake gig at the Boxcar. Um, I will be posting links and all that kind of stuff soon. But if you're anywhere near Utah, make the drive, guys. Make the drive. I need people to come <clears throat> to my West Virginia Pittsburgh uh, shows in November. But yeah. so th- this week, November 2nd through the 5th, I'm doing like the second I'm in Worcester, Mass. The third I'm in Buffalo. The fourth and fifth I'm in Huntington, New York. And I'm just opening for Brian Regan. You get to see Brian Regan, you guys. Very exciting. And um, why is that in there? Anyway, so but the real the real thing I need you guys is is that second because so that's the and then the nine ten eleven Austin very exciting and then I'm gonna on the fifteenth of November I'm in Morgantown West Virginia I don't know where that is but I'm it's renting. a college town it's a college town That'd I'm renting good. a car I'm gonna drive and uh, and then. I'm doing, so the 15th, I'm in Morgantown, West Virginia. The 16th and 17th, looking for sets around Pittsburgh. And then the 18th, I'm doing essentially the fanciest uh, liquor store in the world. It's a distillery. It's called the King's Fly Pit uh, Liquor. And so November 18th, I would love it if all of you came to that because that is, I that believe, a fun. door deal. And I'm trying to do more of those because people are like, come to my town that you never come to because they don't book me. And then in December, I'm actually doing Ann Arbor. I'm doing uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan, the 7th, 8th, and 9th, Pearl Harbor Day. Very exciting. And mm-hmm. um, and then I think uh, I'm just doing L.A. shows till the end of the year. Hey, I forgot. Uh, December twenty uh, ninth and thirtieth, I'm at the Sacramento Punchline. Sacramento, oh, Sacramento, you're my hometown. You're an hour and a half from my hometown. Let's do it. I love Sacramento. I've been working Sacramento since I started comedy. Uh, so please come to the Punchline. And then thir- the thirty first, I'm in Marin for. Uh, I'm doing a show for the Booker of the Other Cafe. Uh, the other uh, went down decades ago, but he still uh, got a hand in comedy. And uh, so we're doing a show in Marin on December 31st. So, so I'll you're be in the in Bay the, Area. In I'll that be whole... in North Cal. North Cal, Jackie. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it's, come on oh, out for that. There you go. We did it. We talked about yeah. our, our shows. Yeah. So there you go. And then you could go to our websites and just check things if uh, yeah. if, if all of that's unclear. Please. 